Hey everyone, we're gonna do a video, it's gonna be pick apart because we've got an engine open here, we're doing injectors and a vehicle on the horse for a 140k service. Um, this is a 2012 Hilux and a bit of interesting info, new injectors just sitting in place at the moment, just about to uh, continue getting all that back together. Um, but very interesting, so it's a 2012, first month 2012, Hilux. Over recent years, a lot of people have been really trying to work out whether they've got full DLC injectors or not. So I'll just quickly go over that again. These injectors were built in September 2009. So the vehicles are 2012, January. So that is correct. That means the injectors are about, and we've said this before in videos, injector information playlist people. Check it out. Um, the injectors uh, sometimes up to three years older than the car, right? So obviously they build the engines, they build the injectors, they build the cars. And of course, to build the car, you need the injectors and the engines ready first. So the injectors could be the oldest because you need the injectors ready when you build the engine. Otherwise, you can't put the injectors in the engine either, right? So yes, be aware that um, you could have a 2012 vehicle with really old... So let's now step to the full DLC. So in your 150 Prada, for example... All your injectors, all the early ones, are not DLC coated. So they've got a finish like this one, and you might be able to see the see the wear on that. See that area up there is where you're looking, right? Have a good look. See all that? You can see it with your eye. We're talking about a micron or two of clearance, and you can see it with your eye, so that's not good. The DLC coating, a lot harder and less friction, so they work better for longer. That's just a bit dirty at the moment. You don't see any wear on them. They work. They're bloody beautiful. That's what all the new cars have or should have, um, and that's why the injectors are going to last a lot longer. This was installed, they started the ma that manufacture of the injectors in 2010, but we've got injectors built early 2010 with this coating, but then injectors built late 2010 and they haven't got the coating there like this. So that means if these injectors in a 2012, well then you could have injectors built in 2010, which is a year newer, but they could be in a vehicle a year later. So you could have a 13 with these. So that's where it's a bit of a hard one to make the call most of them from 2012, 13 onwards are going to have injectors like this, which is much better. But you certainly want these in there for that reason. They're much better. You want the DLC coated stuff, which is, if you get injectors from us, that's all you're going to get, DLC coated injectors. DLC coated injectors for your 150 Prado, full DLC, okay? So the 120s part DLC, um, it's a bit confusing. Check the injector information playlist. Your Hilux from... September 09 onwards, what we supply will be full DLC. They're going to last, well, they'll last a couple hundred thousand k's or longer if it's highway kilometres. So it's not just about kilometres. It's about the age and how many k's a year you do. If you don't do many k's, it's all good because they're going to last you about 10 years anyway. So when you work it out properly, it's not really a massive cost. I mean, every 10 years. Now, this one's here for a service. It was allowed to come into the Prada Hospital because it looked like a clean car. Uh, last time I remember it was fairly clean, but that's because he just got it and he was getting it checked out and getting its base service. Now it started going out in the dirt and stuff like that. So I'm not complaining. I'm communicating. I'm letting everybody know. Um, this is not that dirty at all, right? <laughs> you know, people that work on cars know this is not dirty, but any dirtier than this. And it could start not, you know, when you text me to get that booking, I'm, oh, you know, I'm busy that week, you know, you know, you know. Because I'll remember all this dirt that fell on me when I took the plate off here to do the oil change, right? I'll remember. So all these chunks and bits and pieces, more still. And then cleaning the floor, you know, all that sort of thing. Anyway, um, there's nothing to see on this. It's only done 140K. Um, boring, boring, boring. Uh, done the 140K service. What do we see? Brakes are like new. Nothing to see here. Lube the drive line. Yep, totally boring. Let's not waste, not waste any time here. But be aware when you wash the vehicle, you need to... Uh, wash those rocks off so when you turn full lock um you, you could spit a bit of mud over this direction towards the transmission sometimes and it lands up on that cover there the other thing is when you haven't got the clearance this is ha has not got a lift you need to get a two inch lift as you go and hit the tracks and what happens is if you haven't got it and standard bash plates and some other ones you're going to hit a lot of stuff you're going to damage them like that and uh fraser Island sand scoop here um and when you reverse up because it didn't work out, then this scraping is going to go and scrape and put it up there as well. So just be aware of that. But there's nothing to see under this, really. The bushes actually are starting to split already. So just be aware of that. See that? That's what you get bouncing around on Fraser Island sand dunes. 
or maybe it's had a wheel alignment and they've twisted the bushes. Maybe it's seized. I doubt it though. It's probably just bouncing around on the old suspension, 140k. So not only does it really need a lift kit because it needs clearance, it really needs a lift kit to get new shock absorbers. So actually works out really good value for money um, to replace your suspension because spending two grand here on these shock absorbers, struts, whatever, getting a lift kit saves you scraping, wrecking your underbody, your bash plates. And it saves you wrecking these bushes here because these arms, if you want genuine ones like these, they're about another $2,000. So you kind of waste two grand replacing these later if you don't replace these sooner rather than later. So anyway, a bit of a general video, okay? So original suspension, it's just time to change it. You need to get, it'll be happening soon. Next time you see this car, take note, it's got the Wild Peak 70 series, um, you know, it's 265, 70, 17. Uh, no bull bar at the moment. He's trying not to because he likes it without it. You know, everybody knows what I mean. It just drives nice. But then, you know, there's pros and cons of bull bars. You just got to work out if you need it. This was all ripped, this flap. Um, so I just got rid of the last little pieces that were there that were zip tied just sitting here and there. Not required. It's good for inspection. Now you can see in there, nothing's going to go in there. You don't need to waste your time replacing those. So you can thank me later. Um, what else we got? Obviously the radiator has been replaced on this cause it's got the uh, drain plug upside down on the bottom. That's just the bleed of it. The aftermarket ones and put instead of putting, well, some of them have the flat cap, but if you see the one that looks like a drain plug like that, um, that's the aftermarket. And you know why? Cause if you're not careful, if you break that off, you're going to need a radiator. So I'm just finishing off this uh, 140k service. And another thing, I don't think I've put this in a video, Sometimes these caps, they're really tight to undo, like you und and they're just really tight. If it is tight, um, just put some molly coat on it, underneath on the thread or on the O-ring, bit of both, whatever, a little bit on And you don't ever tighten them, they just go around until they go click into that little position there. Same on the Hilux. Um, every now and then you just get one that's tight. They just get a bit really dry in the threads and that sort of thing. You can wash it out, a bit of water will temporarily fix it, but might just end up the same, won't hurt to put a bit of molly coat in there wash down beautiful give it a blow dry and to finish this video off for all the best people all the best regulars all the people subscribe with a bell on or hitting the like button and all that smash it out some more for me can you and do me a favor stop skipping the bloody ads just watch the ads so i can make 10 cents would you it's probably 10 cents if you watch 10 ads that's probably about i think i worked out it's probably about 0.01 cent every time you watch an ad but anyway um what I wanted to tell you, so we wash the engine down, blow it dry, a bit of a road test. You know, I go for a few Ks um, on a general service. Um, on an injector job, it's a 20K drive minimum. On an engine, it's the 20K drive and maybe another 20K drive by um, someone else. And then there's the, if it's at the engine replacement hospital, it's the 100K drive back to Melbourne. So, yeah, we want to make sure it's all Mickey Mouse. That's how we roll. You know what to do if you want it done properly right the first time. But what I want to tell you about... Make sure you watch, if I don't put a video out, right? So let's say I go on holidays and I'm like, you know, I'm away for a week or two and I don't put any videos out. There's plenty to keep you busy. It's catch up time, check out the playlists and just go through videos and watch them and put up with a waffle, watch it, listen when you're driving, whatever you want to do. But there's one at the moment, you know, the one that started, it was actually, I made a mistake. It was four o'clock in the morning because I wasn't sure if it was two or three, you know, at that time. But then I looked at the clock in one of the cars said three but I was informed later by the kids that's wrong. It hasn't been changed daylight saving, you know what I mean? So uh, it was actually four o'clock in the morning. Not that that matters, but it usually happens in the middle of the night. Um, and in one of the videos, we actually got to the point of explaining exactly what went wrong and why. But what I want to, I want to point something out here is where the water gets in this. I'm not going to go into detail of the problem. You've got to watch all those other videos, but even without aftermarket wiring going through i believe there's a chance of water getting in there now let me turn this light on and see if i can get in there and show you what i'm talking about okay lights camera action now there's the grommet that i would use to run a wire through because that's what it's there for now if you wash the vehicle wash the car park out in the rain water's going to come down through all these areas some water's going to drip down here even if you haven't done an engine wash there be aware it's not all about car washes but what i want to show you is look down see that big grommet down here all right so that big one See that tube there for the uh, windscreen washer that goes to the back? I hope that's what it's for anyway. Um, see, it's not that tight. It's, you go and have a look on your car. That is not that tight. So what I'm saying is, so there's water sitting around it. Water, some water would have went in the car. And that's what I'm trying to say. It's risk that it could probably happen to any vehicle. It's not just ones that have had 
aftermarket wiring. I'm just saying, I haven't seen this before. The one we've got had aftermarket wiring and it's gonna run straight down, but depending how much water was here, it could happen here as well. And since this car's reasonably clean, I thought we'll just have a bit of a look. We're not gonna pull things apart, but just give you a bit of a look around up there. Uh, that water probably may, you know, so you can see that's the area you're looking right now. Just trying to see, is there any water coming there? You look in the video, I hold it still, I'm zoomed. I can't really see, I've got to get this thing out of the way. But there's a possibility of some water, okay? Anyway, so take care of all your grommets over here. Make sure they're sealed up and the wires go through properly. And it's about time we started just pulling these off to have a look, show you what they normally look like, what they're meant to look like. Some of them, this has got a 140. So it's really interesting. Some of them have got a 140, one of them have got a 120. So maybe at some point they upgraded because this is a 2015. Okay, and the earlier ones have got the white one, which is a 120. So there you go. Um, these ones here, they just pull out. I'm not going to bother pulling it out. Um, like I said, that, that'd be a starter relay. Still, no air suspension one there because it's not a kakadu. That's what, remember this, see, not melted. ST for starter, air suspension. Someone said, pull the green one, pull the green one. Well, hope they keep watching videos because if you pull the green one, as it says there, that's your glow plug. So uh, you got that wrong. Again, there's quite a few people in the comments trying to help out. appreciate that, but a lot of the time they're wrong. So just follow the videos, not the comments. If the comments are right and I'm wrong, I'll do another video and tell you about it. So that's what it should look like. It shouldn't be getting hot. It shouldn't be melted. Beautiful. All right, that's it. Subscribe, turn the bell, and catch you on the next one.